Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara O'Brien. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Sarah Pascoe and Rob Beckett, Ramesh Ranganathan, Hugh Dennis and Gary Delaney. <laughs> we start with a round call if this is the answer. What is the question? On the board are six categories. Sarah, which category would you like? Politics, please. OK, uh, the category is politics. The answer is... Oil, money and missiles, what is the question? Is that um, hashtag Iraq war spoilers? <laughs> is it actually how is Chelsea Football Club funded? <laughs> is it the three things you need to get on the property ladder? <laughs> <laughs> is it the rejected title for Tony Blair's autobiography? <laughs> oh. <laughs> A lot of Blair fans here. Yeah, that <laughs> <laughs> is it the Middle East version of rock, paper, scissors? <laughs> <laughs> is it three is it... things that A&E nurses have found up people's bottoms? <laughs> <laughs> is it three things America looks for in an enemy? <laughs> Are we getting into this show? There's people over there I've really annoyed who are huge fans of Wars and Tony Blair. Yes. I'm very sorry. <laughs> Is it since I've grown a beard what I'm most likely to be searched for at an airport? <laughs> Is it what does Abu Qatada shout at the moment of orgasm? <laughs> Do you I'm going to move towards the correct answer, I can't Is it I say. lost a stone on which diet? <laughs> <laughs> The correct answer is this is um, things that are going to be affected if Scotland get independence. Mm. That is, is, yeah. I'll Whatever it that. is, it's, it's about Scottish independence. It is. Or as I'm... I like to call it, the Great British Break Off. <laughs> Yes, uh, the question I was looking for was what were three of the major issues debated during the run-up to the referendum on Scottish independence? Fierce debate has surrounded issues such as the value of North Sea oil reserves, the economic uncertainty that could follow a yes victory and the removal of the UK's Trident nuclear submarines from Scotland. As we air right now, the polls have just closed and the votes are being counted. So we have no idea what the results are, but equally, we're probably less bound by the laws last week in terms of inf we can't influence the vote. So we are magically have, have zero power and zero information. It is an exciting time to do a topical <laughs> news quiz. Uh, <laughs> we can affect nothing and we have nothing to tell people. It really is magical. Is magical. This, uh, but it's uh, the first time we're already as out of date as the programme is on Dave. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You know, my, my, my big worry about the whole Scottish independence thing is what happened, how they introduced, Friday morning, how they introduced Good Morning Britain. Well, I, well, I presume worry. what happened, if it's a yes vote, is that on, on one of the Good Morning shows, uh, we will see live footage of Lorraine Kelly being arrested and put into a back of a truck with other well-known Scottish people and being sent <laughs> back to Scotland to host a show if she wants up there. Who knows how she, she'll forage for berries or something, I don't know. <laughs> and other Scots will this and be, be driven away uh, and dumped at the border and I uh, don't applaud that it's <laughs> clearly <laughs> it hasn't come true right Dyer? yes yes that'll show them that'll show the ones who had no vote <laughs> I'm quite excited for him to go independent though because then when I have a Scotch egg I can claim to like foreign food <laughs> <laughs> around. Not some delicacies. <laughs> Scotch eggs. Special. Not even in the UN. How foreign's that? Special. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The worry though is that as the economy collapses they'll go from Scotch eggs and all I have in the end is, is like mini Scotch eggs. Oh, which really? are nicer in my opinion. <laughs> really well they end up really rich and they become like olden time kings and start putting scotch eggs inside scotch eggs inside oh scotch my God, eggs like duck egg Huge inside like an yeah. yeah. emu yeah. egg yeah. and then they'll get yeah. Fabergé to build the outside of it well, and then they'll put well, sausage they on the outside of that. Encase the whole of Scotland in sausage meat. <laughs> It is, it is literally two minutes after the polls have closed that we are not reverting to calling I'm it Scotchland. <laughs> 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 I said Scotchland. I said 
Scotland. I was talking about Scotch here because we live in a like Scotch land. I'm sorry, Scotland. <laughs> it's too late. Too late now. Yeah, it's, yeah. Fuck. it's either one way or another. I thought that. Scotch eggs were where Scottish people came from. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we're probably not reflecting the tenor of the debate yeah. as it occurred for the last two no. weeks. That's what makes yeah. me laugh when they'll say, oh, you can't say anything because it might sway people, people's opinion. As if they're going to go, cool, well, what's going to write now? But Rob Beckett had a good point about Scotch eggs. <laughs> <laughs> but then, the people that have, who, who actually did join in during the campaign, how much of an effect did they have? None. Well, I mean, David Cameron, he went up to Scotland, didn't he? He referred to himself as the effing Tories. Yeah. I don't think most Scottish people had any clue what he was talking about. If he'd said seeing Tories... <laughs> You sort of came across like one of these teachers that's trying to be all really cool, like, hey guys, yeah, you know, I know you're worried about the bloody exams, do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so hard, isn't it? But I was just listening to some rap music on my way over here, and I just wish I'm totally down with the struggle, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Shut up, mate. I don't think you can lose one tenth of your population and one third of your landmass and stay prime minister. Especially when you're the, the prime minister of the Conservative and Unionist Party, <laughs> which is their full title. Which he's got previous, didn't he? He lost his daughter at the pub. <laughs> <laughs> I find it funny that all like the banks are having to move and all the businesses yeah. are having to move. Like the banks are moving down to England. I feel sorry for the Scottish widow. She's just lost her our, our husband. <laughs> now she's got to move country. <laughs> my, one of my biggest worries, genuinely, is that if the Scots go, we lose the most trusted accent in the United Kingdom. If you call up a health call centre, you want someone to go, OK, calm down, sir, I'm a trusted <laughs> NHS operative, calm down. And what are we left with? Someone go, calm down, calm down! <laughs> <laughs> you won't stop breathing, don't worry about it! I think you might have missed the boat in worrying about call centres moving. <laughs> <laughs> People keep talking about what will happen with Scotland's relationship to Europe if they get a yes vote. But what about if they really have enjoyed this process and so they leave the Great Britain and then they decide they want to leave Europe and then they decide they want to leave the world and they just become a second moon orbiting <laughs> us from above in this well, idyllic I, utopia. Would they still do Scotch eggs? <laughs> yeah. <Cool>. yeah. <laughs> I think Scotland have to stay in the EU, because the very name, EU, sounds like a Glaswegian trying to start a fight. <laughs> <laughs> what knock-on effect could it have for the EU? Oh, well, Spain are worried about it, aren't they? Because oh, yeah. uh, they, they'll break up. Yeah. Because the Catalans. 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 And the Basques, the Basques yes. And the Basques. Yeah. Belgium, Which is a form Belgium of Belgium underwear. Is... I don't know how you give a form of underwear independence. <laughs> Just take it off. Yeah. Oh, OK. <laughs> The shipping forecast's going to be a bit buggered, I think. It's going to have to change. What, is, is the weather forecast going to, going to pretend that Scotland has no weather? Well, I think it will is probably the go... Are all the weather maps going to yeah. stop at Northumberland? Well, I think it go, will simply go... And the rain will go to here. Yeah. <laughs> shipping forecast will go Thames, White, Dover, slight, becoming moderate later. Cromarty, Hebrides, fourth. Get your own forecast. <laughs> <laughs> we know, but we're not going to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> well, got, everyone, everyone laughed at Mel Gibson in Braveheart, yeah. but he predicted this. Yeah, I... <laughs> can I take that away from him? I know, I blame Mel Gibson, and he blames the blacks and the Jews. <laughs> oh, does it? I've not seen oh, that film. This conspiracy yeah. goes really deep, <laughs> doesn't it? It's a very different... Braveheart 2 is a very different film. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sean Connery's come out, though, hasn't he? Sean Connery's come out for... He's a... gay! <laughs> Surprised. Uh -huh. <laughs> There's always one yeah. person when somebody yeah. says, Oh, such and such is gay. I knew. I, knew I always knew. <laughs> I always knew that him. Yeah. Sean Connery supports the Yes campaign but doesn't want to live there. Because yeah. he's worried if he obviously lives there, that it'll change the way he speaks and it's going to ruin his vast array of accents. <laughs> so... <laughs> the two sides are, are saying two different things, aren't they? So the, the well, no yes, campaign. Yes, and no. <laughs> <laughs> That's <fine>. sure. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I, you know, particularly just because being Irish, I've stayed out of the whole debate. I found it quite funny uh, from an independent country uh, where, that people going, well, it's been a very bitter debate. A very bitter debate here. People were mean to me on Twitter. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, were they mean to on Twitter? During the Irish War of Independence, my granny hid in a ditch from British soldiers for an entire <laughs> night. <laughs> so, uh, boo hoo, <laughs> Twitter girl. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
And now, meanwhile, what has George Osborne asked the public to design? Is it a plan for the economy? Uh, <laughs> no, it is not. <laughs> That's a really bad photo. It's, uh... <laughs> it's a new pound coin. Uh, yes, it is a new pound coin. It's yes. a new pound coin, but they won't because it's such a big thing. They're not going to decide, are they, before the referendum's over? No. And then they're going to well, have because that'll be the design... tomorrow morning. So no. <laughs> it's not, they're not coming out for a few years yet. Should we no. just not hedge our bets and put Charles on it? <laughs> <laughs> They talk about designing pound coins. They've been designing pound coins around my way for years. 20 for 15 quid, if you're interested. <laughs> do they do their own? I'd like to think the forgers do their own designs. Uh, yeah. They do, yeah, they're banging. Oh, yeah, that'll be one of mine. That'll be one of mine, <laughs> isn't it? It should be something that reflects the status and value of the pound coin. That's what the design should be, mm. shouldn't it? So I think the design should probably have a picture of, like, a shopping trolley on it. And on the other side, it should say, token. <laughs> Coin's head on one side, isn't it? Yes, that, that and, remains. And, that you know, and obviously, you know, every coin's got a head and a tail. So if it's got the royal head on one side, surely it should have a royal ass on the other side. <laughs> Prince Andrew, he'd fit the bill, wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> they should bring back one pound notes. That was much more fun, wasn't it? Just better yeah. feels rich. That was not in our lifetime, though. No, but I had one out of currency just because I was like, player. <laughs> That was not in your lifetime. What? No, I'm only young. Bloody hell. What? Really? When, when, did, when, when were you born? I'm um, 86. Yeah, it wasn't in your lifetime. <laughs> How long have we been fun, doing though, this show? Like... I remember it was like Roy Bremner and Frank. How yeah. were these children? I don't uh, know. One day we'll be sitting in your seats telling people we met you. <laughs> <laughs> Now we come to a round called Mock Eye the News. <laughs> this game involves Sarah and Gary. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand of challenge. I launched a wheel of news, and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. Okay, let's spin the wheel. The first subject is technology. Who is going, Sarah? Yeah. Um, uh, hello. I would, um, I'd love to be a dictator. I think I'd be absolutely brilliant at it. I think you should all vote for me in your last act of democracy. And then, on my first day, I would ban Facebook. <laughs> Facebook is my enemy. Right, I'll tell you what happens. My boyfriend will be at home in a different room on his computer and he'll shout out something that you would think was perfectly innocent, like, Oh, you never told me that Katie's been to Tunisia. Katie's my most beautiful friend, right, she's absolutely stunning. She went to Tunisia in 2009. <laughs> Which means that he's been sitting there going back through five years of photographs looking for one of her in a bikini. <laughs> I blame Facebook. In the olden days, if a man fancied a woman and wanted to see a picture of her in a swimming costume, he had to open a Snappy Snaps near her house <laughs> and hope that she came in after her holidays. Like, if you wanted to perv, you put some effort in. <laughs> Right. Just because I'm here on Mock the Week, I just want to tell you something. So there's two things you need to know. My name's Sarah, but without an H, so it's spelled S-A-R-A. -A. And I've always hated that my whole life because people call me Sarah. They ask me, why don't you have an H on your name? Like, I was anything to do with that decision. <laughs> also, the other thing is, I've, also, I've always heard other comedians talking about how um, you get a lot of abuse on Twitter and people are very horrible to you, and I've never had any. And I thought that was because I was really brilliant and everyone liked me. And then, during August, I got contacted, because I'd been on Mock the Week, I got contacted by a lady called Sarah Pascoe, with an H. <laughs> and she said to me, can you warn me the next time that you're on television? Because I'm getting a lot of people saying they wish I was dead or infertile. <laughs> She's a nurse in Exeter. She works like 70 hours a week doing this amazing job and now she's unwittingly acting as my complaints department. <laughs> <laughs> so if you didn't like this, you know who to tell. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. That leaves us with Gary. Let's see what topic you have. Let's spin the wheel. The topic is nationalities. Where you go. My next-door neighbour's really loud and obnoxious, so now I know how Canada feels. <laughs> I bought some lamb chops. On the packet it said, reared in Wales. I thought that was just a racist stereotype. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
This morning I made a Belgian waffle. In the afternoon I made a Frenchman talk bollocks. <laughs> In Scotland, the forbidden fruit is fruit. When England played Poland at Wembley, there was 30,000 Polish fans in the crowd, and I thought, well, fair play to them. If I'd built it, I'd want to have a look round as well. <laughs> <laughs> I like to annoy my Israeli flatmate by giving him any post that's just addressed to the occupier. I was at an Italian zoo with a Christian friend of mine, so I thought, went in Rome and pushed him into the lions. <laughs> Nan's going to that suicide clinic in Switzerland, but don't tell her, it's a surprise. <laughs> My granddad was killed by a Zulu. He was having a shit at Whipsnade and the roof collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> well done, very good. Point to the end over to Gary. Thank you very much. Our next round is called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what's happening. So, what's going on here? <laughs> That's Boris Johnson and he's finally got enough rope to hang himself. <laughs> <laughs> this is from a series of photographs, I believe, called Characters of Britain. Um, <laughs> this is number four, The Village Idiot. <laughs> Ever wanted a couple of Somali pirates to turn up? <laughs> Take him off. Is the captain saying, No, I said we need a massive anchor? <laughs> <laughs> Is he surrounded by all the women he's been faithful to? <laughs> <laughs> Is it, um, Boris delivers waterside Benny Hill tribute act? <laughs> Is it, um, blonde sweat on a boat? <laughs> <laughs> that was the name of your holiday album, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Does anyone know what it is? What the new story is? I think uh, it's a new story about Boris Johnson. I'll give you that. <laughs> what happened this is week, it, uh, Boris? Is the it, news? Is it about him going standing for election? It is, of course. Thank you very much, Rob. Well done, Rob Beck. Very good. <laughs> Come on, the fun all the time, guys. Get a bit of that <laughs> Oh, of course, that's right. It's a picture of the Mayor of London, Boris Johnson, who this week has been selected as the Conservative candidate for Uxbridge and South Ryslip for the 2015 <laughs> general election. <laughs> the people of Uxbridge and South Ryslip are already celebrating. Uh, <laughs> just getting a mention. People are worried about him being Prime Minister, saying he shouldn't have his finger on the nuclear button. But let's face it, if Boris saw a button, he'd be more likely to try and undo it than actually press it. <laughs> It would it's... probably change Scotland's view of Trident if, they, if it was Boris who was in charge of Trident. They'd probably go, yeah, we'll just look after it here. Uh, <laughs> probably at its best too. We'll take it offline and just leave it here. It's in Glasgow, it's nice and safe. Is it a good idea, him wanting to be Prime Minister? I mean, the rate we seem to be losing countries at the moment, Mayor of London might be the biggest job going, might <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you can't have him lead in the country. Do me a favour, we can't even lead a conga line. <laughs> Get lost somewhere. It's a massive insult to Ed Miliband, though, isn't it? Just like, we could put any old shit in, mate, and you're not going to have a chance. <laughs> Cameron and Boris, they're both Eton, both Oxford, both yep. Bullingdon. Yep. One of them's really popular, right? And the other one is supposedly out of touch. Maybe David Cameron, instead of getting out of bed, trying to be this sort of clean cut family man, what he needs to do is get out of somebody else's bed, put his suit on in a hedge. <laughs> If, you, if he's got a canvas, he's got to get votes, hasn't he? So if someone that famous turned up at your doorstep, right, and wanted your vote, you would have fun with them, wouldn't you? If he turned up, you would go, yeah, I've never voted, uh, Tory. Go on. Say whiff-whiff. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, go on that bike, fall off it. Yeah. <laughs> He is a shagger, though, isn't he? Mm -hmm. He's had at least three affairs. And if he, what are the tabloids waiting for? Paddy Ashdown had one affair, got known as Paddy Pantsdown. <laughs> what are they waiting for, given that Boris's surname is Johnson and his initials are BJ? <laughs> <laughs> uh, why has Mars been in the news this week? Uh, referendum. They want, um, uh... <laughs> <laughs> they want, they want Independence eight. from the solar system. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's the big fight they go for. Well. Yeah, yeah. This is this is a basically a Big Brother style competition where yeah. people get to go to Mars. And it's, if you think yeah. if you want to go on a reality TV show and disappear forever, surely just go on X Factor and win it. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Imagine, though, like, the injections you need just to go somewhere like India. Imagine what you need to go Mars. <laughs> I was like, why do you need eight years of prep to go Mars? I went to Malaga the other week, got on a plane, didn't prep at all, and I was fine. <laughs> got on it, got there, got off, and it was hot, but I dealt with it. <laughs> Yes, it's the Mars One project, which aims to send 20 people on a one-way trip to the red planet within the next decade or so. Uh, mm. Do you want to spot the key word in that, in that sense? Can you spot the bit that stood out from that? Is it one... one it's one way! One way. That's the bit that yeah. I always yeah. note for this, because I know somebody, a scientist in Dublin, who's, who's put himself up for these in the last 700 to make into this. Oh. It's a one-way trip. Oh, God. Oh. No, no way you're coming back. And this is the big brother. We'll, we'll tune in. Grow to love these characters. Slowly watch them die. <laughs> Well, send, so send back recorded messages from the panel going, well, oh, Bob's dead. Yeah. Uh, so. is, that, is that Geordie who does a voiceover going with him? Is he going to go, Dear three, and I can't help thinking I've made a crap decision. <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to be 2022, isn't it? When um, they can get up there. It's the same time, they think they should move the Qatar World Cup there. Cos it, <laughs> it won't be as hot, it'll be more hospitable unless people will die getting it ready. <laughs> a TV show where people might actually be watched like suffocate, starve to death or just die of old. It's going to be worse than Splash. <laughs> <laughs> so there'll be a load of people that play this like, oh, well, I'm an uh, astrobiologist, well, I'm an uh, intergalactic geologist. I'm Terry! <laughs> yeah, exactly. oh, I'll do a bit of DJ on the weekend, event management, I'm the Vibe Master! <laughs> 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 and what the, the plane, what the rocket is on thing, you just hear this grime coming out of it. Yeah. Terry, turn it off. No! <laughs> Why do I no use my voice for idiots? <laughs> this, this is, this is class Teddy. war, people. I'm Terry the Welsh DJ. <laughs> That's it now, I'm going to be in the vibes to space. <laughs> I can't keep this up much longer. <laughs> you keep doing that Welsh accent, Rummish will be offended as well. <laughs> I'm part, I'm part Welsh. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, that they, 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 they want to do it in teams of four, and they want each of those four people to come from a different continent. Because it's not difficult enough being up on Mars. Let's throw a language barrier in there as well. <laughs> <laughs> there is a famous story of, of, of a Russian cosmonaut. They, there were two of them up on the uh, Mir space station at one stage, going for six months, just the two of them. And they really couldn't get on. Didn't oh, get on oh, at oh, all, oh, right? And they were at opposite ends of the space station. Imagine the atmosphere. And it was... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and one of them said, I, I contemplated suicide uh, while oh, I was up there. God. But you can't hang yourself in space. At the end of that round, the point's going to rob Sarah and Andy. <laughs> now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area. I'll read out this week's topics, and then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. The first subject is... Unlikely things to hear at an award show. And the Oscar goes to a prison in South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the National Taxi Driver Awards. <laughs> And the winner of Spiritualist Medium of the Year goes to... I'm getting a D. David. <laughs> Duncan. <laughs> Trevor. Trevor it is. And the Pride of Britain Award goes to... Scotland. <laughs> and the award goes to 12 Years a Slave for Most Challenging Work Experience Placement. <laughs> And the award for most dramatic pause and award ceremony goes to... <laughs> Sadly, he can't be with us tonight, so to collect the award on his behalf, Chief Inspector Harris of Operation Utree. <laughs> And the prize goes to Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Unfortunately, Dawn couldn't be here tonight, so... <laughs> In order to collect the prize, please welcome Sharon of the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. But I just have to say that I was shit, and you should give it to Judy. <laughs> and the award for most disappointing sound effect in a TV show 
goes to... <laughs> this is the Identity Theft Awards, and I'm your host, Dara O'Brien. <laughs> And a spectacular entrance from Lady Gaga. She should probably cover that up. <laughs> and the winner of this year's Academy Award is St Joseph's Academy. <laughs> Press that in. <laughs> and here at the Satnav Awards, we'd like just to take a moment to remember the people we've lost this year. <laughs> Welcome to the National OCD Awards. I've got a feeling someone's going to clean up tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for awarding me Sexual Fetishist of the Year. <laughs> and let me tell you, this is going straight up my <laughs> arse. <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely lines from a romantic novel. This is the last time that we can be together, he said. Aren't you going to say something? <laughs> yes, 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 cried Alex Salmond. <laughs> As Christian Grey tied her to the bed, using some cotton stretch slacks, and then started beating around the back with some Sicilian lemon cheesecake, she suddenly realised that he was heavily in to M&S. <laughs> it's for you, she said. My hair in a locket. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> I wanted that cough sweet. <laughs> Harold ran his hand up Connie's thigh. She giggled, made a note of it, and later on got £60,000 at a sexual harassment tribunal. <laughs> I want your breasts, your legs, your thighs. I'm on the phone to Nando's, love. What do you want? <laughs> He searched her eagerly with his tongue, its tip exploring every crevice, every orifice. God, he loved being a customs officer. <laughs> <clears throat> Sarah's love made him feel like a young boy again, so he went off to find one. <laughs> She found him on Tinder and lost him on Grinder. <laughs> when she was in the shower, he went through her iPhone and found something disgusting. She came out as he was leaving. Come back! It wasn't me. They gave them free to everyone. I'd never download a U2 album. <laughs> <laughs> They gazed into each other's eyes, and their thoughts were so in tune, they both thought the exact same thing. You'll do. <laughs> Sean knew that the love of his life had to have a good sense of humour, because while she was laughing, she wouldn't be watching her drink. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, it's not even me, for God. <laughs> at her naked body and then he looked into her eyes. His heart started pounding and he felt a tingling sensation. What a shit time to have a coronary. <laughs> For the first time in her life she reached a shuddering, juddering orgasm. She had no idea that such a thing could happen if you leant against the hot point during the spin cycle. <laughs> As Mr. Darcy kissed her neck, she flushed angrily. Get out! I'm having a shit! <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
that. Yeah, that round. The points go to Rob, Sarah and Andy. And that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parton, Sarah Pascoe and Rob Beckett. Commiserations to Ramesh Ranganathan, Hugh Dennis and Gary Delaney. Thank you for watching. I'm Dara Breen. Good night.